Hello everyone, it's Pat at Beads and Plenty More, and today I'm going to talk to you about paperclip chain. This is a new chain that we've seen this year, and it's made with all these oval or more rectangular looking links. We have this fine one that's in stainless steel, and then we've got these other ones here that are heavier and in gold and gunmetal and silver, all different um, colors of a bigger chain. But for my purpose today, I'm gonna to use the fine one. So we'll put those ones aside. I've cut 17 inches of the uh, stainless steel paperclip chain here, which is in a gold color. And I'm going to carry on from last week where I made the earrings with the uh, music note in the middle. I kind of like that um, design, so I made another one to make it as a pendant. So we're going to just establish the middle of our paperclip chain here, and that's where my pendant's going to sit into the link in the middle. Now I did have some other options here too. I could just put this on directly with a jump ring, and I found that I needed a six millimeter jump ring for this. Uh, last week when we made these earrings, I used only a five millimeter in here because I didn't want the uh, music note to drop down too far. So we could hook this directly with the jump ring, or I had a couple of bales that also worked, and they look kind of nice. Uh, even the little one will feed onto the paperclip chain here. I'll give you an idea what that looks like. So you can have that and then you have to hook it on again with a jump ring so that's the smaller size and then this bigger one also works but i kind of preferred almost to have just the the short or length so that it didn't hang down too far because uh, we want this to kind of fill in a neckline so once again i'm going to get back to my middle which is that link and we're going to put this jump ring through this hole at the top and onto my link here. Use my two pairs of pliers to close up that jump ring nicely. And just bring it back together like that. And sometimes I give it a squeeze too to make sure they're nice and tight. So that's attached the pendant. And the clasp I chose, I'm gonna feature this spring ring we do, I've not used that. I usually use a lobster, but spring rings are kind of an old-fashioned type of closure, but it also is very efficient. So being a chain, the big advantage of a chain is you can hook in any point. So again, let's get this guy settled here so that we know which direction it's falling. And then we're just going to hook this uh, spring ring on again with a jump ring. We'll, Take that jump ring and my two pairs of pliers and just gently open it on itself. Hold and twist. So then I'm going to hook it, my, jump, my spring ring onto the very end on the one side. But the advantage of chain, I can hook this ring in at any point. If I have a neckline that's just a little higher, I can bring the necklace up or opposite if we want it to be a bit lower we can drop it down to the very last link so I've added about an extra inch of links for that kind of adjustment so there we are we've got the uh, spring ring hooked in there and these work of course they open like so a little harder on the fingers to open and close but oh I hope I attached it part way on the chain Okay, let's get that corrected. Even after 32 years of, of experience, I still make mistakes. That's our store's gonna be 32 years old in September. Okay, on to the very end of the chain and hook it in. And again, we'll just hold with one and twist with the other one and give it a squeeze okay so now we can hook in 
say back a little bit if we want to shorten it a bit like that so there if you made a pair of earrings with me last week now you can make a pendant necklace and pendant to go with it thanks for watching bye for now